Mary Beth, I'd love to start with you because here we are in a year with very little sports competition, at least uh, individual sports. Uh, Olympics is a big question mark. And yet the power of the athlete in general uh, continues to be strong. Talk about the partnership. Yeah, you know, our partnership with Allison has been just such a no-brainer. Um, you know, Allison is an athlete, like you said, but also a mother and an activist. And it's been amazing to have her be part of our brand. You know, everything from helping design the products to giving input on what the brand should um, stand for and how we show up for consumers. So it's just been absolutely amazing. Allison, what do you bring to Athleta? And, and more broadly, I mean, in a year where uh, Tokyo's delay, I imagine, was a disappointment, uh, I'm sure your training schedule is upside down. Uh, what do you think you bring to the brand? And then what are your expectations for competition in the next year? Yeah, I mean, I have the same desire and mission as Athleta, and I've always been about empowering women and girls. And so it's such an authentic fit. And I hope that I bring that hope and inspiration as well um, to Athleta. And, um, you know, I still hope to compete. You know, training does look a lot different. We've had to get creative. But that goal is still the Olympics, even though it's postponed. Uh, Allison, uh, good morning. It's, it's John Fort. So it was a powerful moment last year when you called out Nike for its maternity policy, which they did subsequently change. And you talked about how this line with Athleta is about empowering women and girls. What do you think the critical elements of empowerment are at a time like this? Yeah, I mean, I think that we want women and girls to feel confident. And it was really important for me to hold me and other people to hold brands accountable and to really, you know, have that authentic message and see it all throughout the company. And so I want women and girls to have that feeling of strength and confidence and bring that, you know, with what they're wearing, but also what they're doing and what they're able to do and what they can aspire to accomplish. And looking more broadly, Allison, right now in, in technology, we're seeing the former chief operating officer of Pinterest kind of speaking out against the company uh, about how she was locked out of, of big decisions. So it's not enough just to have visual representation or even, um, you know, prominent women in positions of power. But it seems that brands really need to, to listen and involve people. How do you, as someone who is prominent at a time like this, make sure that you have the level of influence that's required to see your vision through? Yeah, I mean, I think it's about doing things differently. I think we're seeing that everything in the past hasn't worked before. And that's why I really love how Athleta is changing this model of sponsorship. And they're really celebrating me holistically and supporting me in that way, not just as an athlete, not just as someone who runs fast, but as a mother and also as an activist and really, um, you know, celebrating all of those aspects of who I am. Mary Beth, you know, we work for Comcast, so we're well aware about how much is on the line regarding Tokyo next year. But I'm wondering, what is, what is the picture uh, from Athleta's standpoint? Uh, if it were to get delayed, I mean, how much, how much damage does that do to the momentum that we're looking for out of these large events? Yeah, I think, you know, the great thing for Athleta is that we have a lot of things going for us, um, you know, in terms of what we're offering our customer. And, of course, we want to see Tokyo happen in the time frame um, and get behind Allison. But the good news is, you know, even right now, our consumer is really responding to our products. She loves the comfort and versatility for her life right now, which is, you know, her at-home workouts and her life at home. And so, I think a lot of that will continue as well as what we're just offering her from a, a customer experience, kind of regardless of how things play out. Allison, is it um, if they said it's open, uh, who, who, the games are on, uh, do athletes in general have any reservations or or are they so anxious to compete on a global scale that they'll sort of try to minimize whatever health concerns there may be related to COVID? I mean, I think we're all ready to go. You know, we're all competitors and we want to get out there. But, um, no, there's really very real concern. I think we all want our to be healthy. We have families and it's this is obviously so much bigger than sports. So as soon as we get the go ahead that things are safe, um, then I think we're all good to go. Mary Beth, I'm wondering, how are you seeing consumer tastes change during this pandemic? Because, yes, people are still working out, but arguably it, it's a less social experience than it used to be. You perhaps aren't gathering in groups at least close together um, and, and being seen. So is the type of fashion 
that, that goes along with the function uh, of the athleisure and athletic wear uh, that, that consumers are interested in? Is that changing? Yeah, I'd say a couple of things. You know, I do think consumers are um, working out in a different way, but they still are working out and they're still actually connecting with people. So, you know, we've had a lot of success in building community through online offerings and we had live stream content events and people working out together virtually. And, you know, from a product standpoint, I think people still want to feel beautiful, right? They want to have a really technical product that supports them in, in their activity. And so I don't think that's changed. I do think, of course, things like, um, you know, joggers for, uh, you know, working at home as well as one. working out at home have really taken off. Um, we might as be well out of time. As, it's okay. As well as masks. And then, Allison, I got to ask, I mean, we've got uh, a world expert here when it comes to performance and fitness. So what are you doing differently during this time? Maybe what are you advising your family uh, to do differently, you know, so that young people know ways to stay healthy during a lockdown? Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of people, even if they aren't runners, have a new relationship with running because it is something that you can do safely and, you know, near your home. So um, I'm just encouraging people, you know, to stay safe, but still be able to be active. And running is a great way to do that.